If you have poor soil or no soil in which to grow a garden, then containers might be the option for you. In this video, I'm gonna break down six tips to help you grow successfully any vegetable in a container. Hey, I'm Brian at Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So my first tip is to choose the right container. Not that hard to do, really, is you can use almost anything as a container as long as it has drainage holes. So you can use plastic pots, you can use wooden containers, I love these galvanized metal wash tubs. Depending on your theme, they look really great. Always make sure you drill lots of drainage holes in the bottom of anything. That's the most important thing about a container. It's got to have good drainage. Uh, a rain gutter can actually be a container. At my last house, I grew strawberries pretty successfully in a rain gutter. Now, if you are growing in plastic containers, you want to make sure you're growing in a safe plastic container for your plants and for you who's eating the produce that comes from these plants. So on the bottom or somewhere on your container, hopefully, there will be a number that looks like this. Um, you're looking for two, four, or a distant third would be five. Uh, not quite as good as the other two, but still pretty safe to use. Now, a very popular type of container that people have been using in the last several years are grow bags or fabric pots. And you guys have asked me to do a video on that, so I'm gonna include that right in here because they are a great choice of container to use. They, um, they fold up, so they're really easy to store and ship to you, I might add. Uh, they do something that other types of containers don't do, and that would be air pruning. And that's really the best thing about these pots is there's airflow that's able to get through this material, whereas a metal or a plastic pot, that's not gonna happen. And so when the roots grow to the edge of the pot, they're gonna detect that air and they're gonna shut off the growth at that end of the root. In a plastic or a metal pot, when they don't have that trigger to shut off their growth, what you're gonna get and you're gonna find when you pull the plant out of the pot is the roots are gonna be winding around and around the bottom of that pot, becoming root bound. It's not good for the plant at all. But with a fabric pot, when the roots hit the edge of this pot, they detect the air, they stop, and that hormone from the end of that root goes back into the root and starts allowing it to put out uh, side roots off of that main root. Much like when you pinch the tip of a plant and it starts to then become bushy. Same thing. Uh, one of the problems also, other than becoming root bound and basically strangling itself to death, is when you have the roots wrapping around the pot, all the roots or majority of the roots are concentrated along that edge of that pot. And when the sun hits it, they heat up, they dry out very quickly. With root pruning, more of the roots are distributed throughout the entire pot. And so just the sun hitting one portion of the pot is not gonna affect the rest of the roots. So interesting story. I have been using this brand of fabric pots. It's called Grass Roots for a little over two years. Typically, before I recommend a product to you guys, I like to try it for at least a season or two to see that it does what they say it's gonna do. It's something that I want to represent because I only wanna represent quality products, um, which is why I don't have that many partners. However, I did like their product. I was going to partner with them back in spring of 2020, and we all know what happened then, and all the COVID gardeners came into the whole gardening arena. Many of you are still here, hopefully. And they sold out of all of their fabric pots like that. No surprise. Then 2020 came around, the COVID gardeners still stuck around and new ones were added and um, they sold out again. So I contacted them this February or March and uh, I asked them, are we gonna be good for the partnership this year? And they have put so much into new inventory that we're good to go. So I can finally, after using these pots for over two years, wholeheartedly recommend this product to you guys. So I know I've, I've, you've seen these pots in other videos uh, and you guys have asked about them and I could not say anything because I didn't wanna overwhelm 
a, a, a company that was already overwhelmed. Now, I want to know how many of you grow in fabric pots, and I also want to know how many of you have been disappointed, like I was, in previous types of fabric pots, um, because I was always disappointed. They drained and dried out very quickly because we live, I live in a dry climate. Um, so all summer long, I was having to water two and three times a day, that same pot, because they kept drying out. And I really did almost swear off uh, fabric pots completely until I found this one. So Grassroots has two types of fabric pots. They have traditional type of pot where if you live in a moist, humid summer environment, those would be great for you. If you're like me and you live in a climate that is dry and warm, maybe hot in the summertime, and you had bad luck before with your fabric pots, they have a living soil fabric pot. And in those, you can see it has this white waterproof liner, but it still at the bottom has an aeration strip. So when those roots hit the bottom, because that's where most of the wrapping occurs, is at the bottom corner of the pot, uh, this has that aeration strip. So it can still root prune or air prune where it needs to. This pot actually creates the top down drying effect that you would see in an in ground garden. So that ensures optimum moisture retention, which is highly necessary, especially in the summer. It eliminates dry pockets and drying around the edges, and it helps cultivate those essential microbes that you want in your soil. Because once your soil dries out, those microbes have a very hard time to, of surviving. So after two years of not being able to say anything, I finally am able to tell you, not only do we have this great new product, but of course, I got a 10% discount for you guys. They're already affordable and you get 10% off in addition. Hello, bee. See, even the bees like them. I'm also, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving some of these away. So hang tight. Let's get to the second tip on container growing. So when it comes to containers, size matters. Now, I've already said you can use just about any container you want as long as you have good drainage. But the basic rule of thumb when it comes to the size of container that you need to use is the bigger the plant, the bigger the root system, and the bigger the root system, the bigger pot needed to contain it. So if you're growing something like runner beans that are tall, tomatoes, big plants like that, that have big root systems, the minimum you would want to grow those in is a five gallon pot. And we're talking about maybe two runner bean plants and one determinate tomato plant, not an indeterminate. When you go to indeterminate plants, you're gonna want a 15 gallon pot as the minimum size. This pink dahlia back here is in a 15 gallon fabric pot. The shorter dahlia is in a five gallon. Now, another thing about pot size, for you, the gardener, is the bigger the pot, the more moisture it will hold onto. When you have smaller pots, you're gonna be watering them more often. For medium-sized plants, like a pepper plant, uh, three to five gallons would be the minimum size there. And for small crops, like a few radishes, a few carrots, one gallon would be okay for that. Now, these are minimums. The bigger you can go, the better for you and your plants. Now, number three is watering. Watering is probably the most crucial part of container gardening. More plants are killed by overwatering and underwatering than probably any other reason. And it's pretty easy to tell if your plant needs water. However, not with your eyes. When you're looking at a pot or in-ground bed and it looks dry on top, that has no correlation to what the moisture level is an inch or even two inches under that dry top layer. So an easy way to do a test, you can buy moisture meters. They're not that expensive and they're pretty reliable, but you've already got a moisture meter for free. It's called your finger. Just stick that down in the soil about two inches. And if you feel moisture, don't water. If it's dry, water. That's it. Number four is to have the right soil. You definitely do not want to put garden soil in your containers, unless you have the lightest, fluffiest, loamy garden soil there is. All other types of soil in a container are going to become compact. They're gonna cause um, 
moisture retention, like too much moisture retention, they'll become waterlogged, the plants will die. Garden soil is just too heavy. It inhibits the amount of oxygen that gets down there and your, your roots actually need oxygen to be healthy. So I always use, uh, you can use potting soil, organic potting soil. You can use um, a mixture, which is what I do, of, of potting soil and mushroom compost or homemade compost. I, what I always used to use was Kellogg's Raised Bed Mix, which is available at Home Depot and I think Lowe's. But any type of organic potting soil will do. Number five is a, a big question that I get all the time, and that is, what types of vegetables can I grow in a container? Truth is, just about anything. I've even grown sweet corn in a container, and it did pretty well. Just keep in mind the size of the container uh, so that it's appropriate for whatever you're growing inside of it. Tip number six is how to fertilize in containers. I do it weekly, and I do it weekly. I use uh, an organic liquid fertilizer. You can use anything. I use uh, tomato and veg from Neptune's Harvest, and I mix it up about half strength, and I use it every single week in containers. So weekly and weekly. Uh, you could also use it full strength every other week. Just depends on your schedule and how you want to do it. And remember that plants in containers can't just send out longer roots to look for nutrients. You have to provide everything they need because they're in a container, they're confined. If you use these six tips, you will be able to grow any type of vegetable you want in a container. All right, now let's really quick talk about the giveaway. Grassroots has provided several sizes of their um, containers for our viewers. And there's three different ways to enter. Number one, be a subscriber to Next Level Gardening. You should be anyway. Um, comment on this video down below. I'm also doing a video tomorrow on growing tomatoes in containers. There's uh, some different things that tomatoes need when they're in containers to really grow them well. And so I'm gonna hit all of those uh, points tomorrow on that video. Comment on that video tomorrow for the second way to win. And then the third way is over on Instagram. If you have Instagram, you get a, th a third way to enter. There will be a uh, picture of today's thumbnail. Go ahead and just follow me on, on Instagram and then uh, comment on what you would grow in your containers. Now, as I always say, we do a lot of giveaways on here. I will announce the winner in a week. This is gonna go for a week. Let's see, the date is gonna be, this goes through May 7th, 2022. And then the 8th of the 9th, I will announce a win the winners on a video just like this. I will not contact you through the comments. That is a scam, especially if it's from WhatsApp. That is not me, ignore them. All right, if you guys learned something, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, share this with a friend, and I'll see you next time.